Hi, welcome to the English Academic Facilitator and thanks for stopping by. This is Sapali once again with another Pearson at Excel IGCSC English Language A paper to coach you to answer the non-fiction texts confidently and accurately. Here I am coaching you with my expertise as a teacher for Edexcel and Cambridge exams for more than three decades. So hope the strategies I teach you regarding each question would definitely benefit you to score band 9 for this paper. So with that said, let's go ahead. This is the paper we are discussing today, Pearson Edexcel International GCSC. English Language A, Paper 1, Non-Fiction Texts and Transactional Writing, 2018 June Morning, our paper. Today we are practicing Section A reading question and you are getting two reading texts. You can spend one and a half hours on this section that carries 45 marks. Your first three questions are asked from text one and that's from an unseen text. And your first question is an inferential question uh, so that you can grasp the answer easily from the text. And the second question assesses your descriptive writing skills by using your own words. And the third one is to explain something using brief quotations. The last two questions assess your analytical skills and the fourth question is based on one of your anthology texts and the last one, uh, question number five, which carries 22 marks is based on both texts and you are supposed to compare them with brief quotations. Uh, these are the assessment objectives and the weight of marks allocated and now let's start answering. The first question is taken from the text one, A Splendid Stay in Bhutan, that describes the writer's first impressions of the country. Question number one, from lines one to three, select two words or phrases that describe Bhutan. So there are many answers for this question and you can select any two words or phrases. This is your second question and you are supposed to describe what the writer does in Bhutan and your answer should be taken from lines 25 to 42. And this question carries four marks. You have to select any four out of these points and by using descriptive writing techniques, you can write the answer. All right. This is how I wrote uh, my answer uh, by using my own words. The writer has made an excursion to ancient towns that had a great historical value. She also trekked to inlands enriched with paddy fields and pine plantations. While visiting isolated monasteries and fortresses, she enjoyed grazing oxen and she had a chance to buy a souvenir from a herdsman who sold old prayer beads. Dropping into one of the world heritage's tiger's nest, she got an amazing experience for her. The third question is to explain what you learn about the hotels and uh, the answers should be taken from lines 43 to 52. And these are the points and remember you need to write five points as the question carries five marks. All right. This is how I answered question number three using brief quotations and make sure that you write five points as this question carries five marks. The treatment like royalty the writer has got shows that guests are well looked after in hotels in Bhutan. Even though they are tiny boutique hotels, their standards are as high as Tokyo and Venice in many ways. Some of them can be the spacious suits with cozy and warm furnaces lit beside huge baths. What is most fascinating of all is the spa treatments in outdoor hot tubs. Spacious cozy beds warmed by hot water bottles may give you a homely feel. Your fourth question is taken from Beyond the Sky and the Earth and your analytical skills are assessed in this question. And this question carries 12 marks.
So let's see how I wrote the answer. Beyond the Sky and the Earth is a memoir based on a journey into Bhutan by a Canadian school teacher, Jemmy Zeppa. She has conveyed her overwhelming impression on this strange place by using linguistic and structural devices that made this writing a successful work of art. That is my introduction. The opening paragraph introduces the dramatic and beautiful landscape in Bhutan as the first impression of the writer. It solidifies that it's a mountainous country with a hyperbolical expression in a dramatic way. The first phrase is mountains all around and there is an echo of this in all and only mountains in the second sentence to emphasize how this is seemingly all that can be seen. The word mountains is repeated six times in the second paragraph, reinforcing the fact that this is the writer's overwhelming initial impression of the country. In addition to this, the repetition of landmass along with the alliterative L in landscape, landmass, meeting landmass, emphasizes how vast the untouched chunks of landscape is. Uh, then I move on to the next paragraph. After the dramatic introduction to the place, she then moves on to her experiences in her first stay in Thimpo to five different flights from Canada to Bhutan and the use of numbers as five flights and four days say how remote the place is. This emphasizes with her exhaustion after the journey by listing of the countries from Toronto to Montreal uh, to Amsterdam to New Delhi to Calcutta to Pyro. Her exhaustion due to remoteness is further emphasized by the use of compound sentence, the precise verbs sum of which alliterative gathering, piling, pinching, knuckling, poking are used to show how the landscape looks crafted. Then the comparative adjective giant gives a humorous imagery showing the vastness of the place while the analogy of a giant child sculpting the landscape is used to help the reader imagine. The adverbial phrase next morning implies that in spite of sleepless night she has woken up with excitement. Apart from linguistic devices, she used some structural devices such as contrasts when she says the town looks very old but is told that it is actually new. The contrast of adjectives highlights the difference between the conditions that she sees in Bhutan and what she is used to. Listing is used again with color adjectives describing tashisho dong, whitewashed, red roofed, golden tipped, giving a sense of vibrancy. The second and third paragraphs open with the time markers first night and next morning to show the reader that these are the early impressions of the place while the last two paragraphs move from describing what the writer sees to recounting what she learns about Bhutanese history, which she shares with the reader. She seems fascinated by the names given to the country and its districts in the past. In the final paragraph, there is an amusing account of how in the 19th century, an Englishman, Andrew Eden, made a disastrous visit to try to prevent the Bhutanese raiding British territory and was unceremoniously treated by them. So this is how I ended. The extract ends on a positive note with the writer expressing her admiration for this small country that has managed to look after itself so well. So that's the end of the answer and this question carries 12 marks. Well, that's enough for today and we'll continue this soon in another video. And don't hesitate to leave a comment uh, as it would really help grow this channel. And if you have not yet subscribed, please do it now. Thanks for watching and bye for now.